lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. Theism is something that's come into vogue within the last perhaps 10 to 12 years, and it has gained a certain amount of momentum, particularly in the United States and to a more limited degree elsewhere, including Great Britain. Essentially, it was more of a philosophical argument than a theological argument, or we might say it was a philosophical argument that was allowed to morph into a theological argument. Its main proponents in America have been Clark Pinnock. I have actually one of the, I read one of his books some years ago, and his associate, whose name was Sanders, I think John Sanders, I'm not sure, but Clark Pinnock would be a chief proponent of it. Let me explain it this way. All mainstream schools of evangelical theological thought, the Lutheran, the Reform, that is the Calvinists, the Wesleyan Armenians, all major schools of evangelical thought, theologically and doctrinally, believe in the omnipotence of God, and they believe that man's will is not truly free. Calvinism says that man is spiritually dead. They're correct. What they're not correct about is when they say that God actually regenerates people spontaneously before they have faith. Nonetheless, they understand that man's will is not free, man has fallen. Luther actually wrote a treatise called The Bondage of the Human Will. Wesleyan Arminianism accepts that man is spiritually dead. His will is not free. Unsaved people who do not have the Holy Spirit must sin. The most choice they have is a degree of choice as to how, when, and where they will sin, but not if. Wesleyan Armenians believe that God must quicken somebody, put a measure of life, as it were, into a corpse, and make it possible for them to choose Christ, and then the Lord draws them. So, we have common ground among all mainstream evangelicals in that man's will is fallen, and that God is omniscient. Something comes up now that begins to challenge it. Usually, when Wesleyan Arminians or Arminians go into heresy, they either gravitate towards Finneyism, Charles Finney, his ideas that basically said we don't have original sin, that although the gospel teaches we're born with the fallen nature, we must be born again, Finney denied this. He said that we can choose to accept Christ when in fact we can't choose to accept Christ, there must be an eclectic, a conviction of the Holy Spirit, a quickening and a drawing. In and of ourselves, because of spiritual death, because of sin, we can't accept Christ. Finney boarded on a more serious error called Pelagianism. The only difference between Finney and Pelagius, the ancient monk who Augustine debated, was that Finney agreed everybody had sinned. So when Wesleyan Armenian people go into heresy, they normally go into heresy by embracing the ideas of Charles Finney or the ide worse ideas of Pelagius, Pelagianism, denying original sin. Clark Pinnock was something different. What he went into was denying the omniscience of God. God did not know the future, at least not in its totality. If God does not know the future, God is not God. He emphasized, Pinnock, the free will of man, which is not true, and the free will of God. 
but he did so by philosophical extrapolation, proposing that God does not know the future and the outcome of the future depends on us. Now a better illustration would be again the one of God on top of the hill or on top of the tower watching the parade. We who are at ground level see the beginning of the parade, the middle of the parade, and the end of the parade. God can see the beginning, the middle, and the end simultaneously from the perspective of eternity. There are passages of scripture that support this. Nonetheless, the denial that God knows the future and the outcome of the future somehow depends only on us to the point that God doesn't do it or know it is what has derived from open theism. Oddly, such abject ideas spiritually, ideas that are totally spiritually abject, have traditionally emanated either from Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, the cults like Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or something, or from liberal Protestantism. Open theism has taken place within what is supposedly evangelicism. This is rather frightening. It denies a fundamental truth. Man's will is fallen. Only in regeneration do we receive our free will back. Now here Calvinism goes wrong. Calvinism says we have no choice. If you're predestined, you must accept Christ, and God creates some people for hell, etc., Going to the diametric opposite extreme of this is, is not even Arminianism, which I, I am a Wesleyan Arminian, essentially. It's not that. It is well beyond that in open theism. They are saying that God does not know the future. They do not understand the free will of man, that it's not free. Neither do they understand the omniscience of God. Although God is sovereign and his, his will is free, and he's not a determinist in the Calvinistic sense, he still is omnipotent and omniscient. He knows the future. Pinnock denies this. Pinnock's ideas have gained momentum in certain circles. People who subscribe to the faulty eschatology and the wrong ideas of dominion theology of triumphalism, of post-millennialism, of the idea that a victorious church is going to conquer the whole world for Christ before he comes back and set up his kingdom, then he's going to come, which is often associated with the old bogus doctrines of the man-child and the latter-day reign, based on a gross misinterpretation of, of the book of Joel, chapter 2, etc. A lot of those people have gravitated towards open theism. It is not biblical evangelicism. It is not scriptural. It does not properly understand the will of man, which is fallen until regeneration. And it does not understand even the free will of God, that he is not a de neither a, a determinist, nor, however, is he ignorant or agnostic about the future and the ultimate outcome of all things. It's a series of philosophical extrapolations that have been theologized and brought into evangelicism. For some years, and we published an article in our printed newsletter some years ago, warning about Clark Pinnock and those who follow him. His ideas and those of his associate, Mr. Sanders, are quite false and quite dangerous. There should be no place for open theism in the mindset of Bible-believing Christians. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Open theism has taken place within what is supposedly evangelicism. This is rather frightening. It denies a fundamental truth. Man's will is fallen. Only in regeneration do we receive our free will back. Now here Calvinism goes wrong. Calvinism says we have no choice. If you're predestined, you must accept Christ and God creates some people for hell, etc. Going to the diametric opposite extreme of this is, is not even Arminianism, which I, I am a Wesleyan Arminian, essentially. It's not that. It is well beyond that in open theism. They are saying that God does not know the future. They do not understand 
the free will of man that it's not free, neither do they understand the omniscience of God. Although God is sovereign and his, his will is free, and he's not a determinist in the Calvinistic sense, he still is omnipotent and omniscient. He knows the future. Pinnock denies this. Pinnock's ideas have gained momentum in certain circles. People who subscribe to the faulty eschatology and the wrong ideas of dominion theology, of triumphalism, of post-millennialism, of the idea that a victorious church is going to conquer the whole world for Christ before he comes back and set up his kingdom, then he's going to come, which is often associated with the old bogus doctrines of the man-child and the latter-day reign, based on a gross misinterpretation of, of the book of Joel, chapter 2, etc. A lot of those people have gravitated towards open theism. It is not biblical evangelicism. It is not scriptural. It does not properly understand the will of man, which is fallen until regeneration. And it does not understand even the free will of God, that he is not a neither a, a determinist, nor, however, is he ignorant or agnostic about the future and the ultimate outcome of all things. It's a series of philosophical extrapolations that have been theologized and brought into evangelicism. For some years, and we published an article in our printed newsletter some years ago, warning about Clark Pinnock and those who follow him. His ideas and those of his associate, Mr. Sanders, are quite false and quite dangerous. There should be no place for open theism in the mindset of Bible-believing Christians. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you.